16th chapter. Very familiar scripture. We're going to look at verses 13 through 19 this morning. Matthew, the 16th chapter, verses 13 through 19. When you have it, say amen. Amen, amen. Reading from the King James Version, it reads as this. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I am, that I the Son of Man am? And they said, Some say that, I, that thou art John the Baptist. Some say Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon, but join oath, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I said also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Verse number 19, and he said, And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Bow your heads. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you this day, God giving you honor, giving you glory, and giving you praise, God. Lord, I decrease right now that you may increase, Lord. Speak through me, around me, and with me, O oh God. I am nothing but a choice vessel, God. Use me at this moment and at this time for your will and your purpose, Lord. Lord, let this message be followed by signs and wonders and miracles, O oh God. Let your word be proclaimed as it ought to be, O oh God. We surrender to you right now. Holy Spirit, have your way in here. It is in your precious son Jesus' name we pray. Let the body say amen. 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 Just for a moment, I would like to talk to you, preach to you from the subject, confession. Somebody say confession. In order to truly understand our assignment as Christians running this race, fighting the good fight of faith, we must look at this very subtle but powerful process. It's a tool that we possess called confession. Everybody here has experienced confession before. But see, in life, what I've discovered is that in this moment of confession, the way that we learned confession, sir, the way that we learned confession, pastor, was that we learned it in a negative sense. As a child, when you did something, you got your hand caught in the cookie jar. You went outside when you wasn't supposed to. You was kissing a little girl behind the tree. You was doing those things that you wasn't supposed to do, and your parents found out, and they sat you down, and they told you to do what? Confess. And at that moment of confession, you knew one or two things was going to happen. Either you was going to go get that switch that was outside afterwards. You was going to get spanked with the belt. You was going to get told, I'm going to give you a warning right now, but I need you to confess. So we learn confession in the aspect of a, a negative sense because when we learn confession, we learn that it came along with a penalty. It came along with a penalty. And it's not by chance that I think that we discovered confession in this way. See, we know who the ruler of this world is. It's Satan, amen? So when we learn confession, we learn that it came with the penalty because the ruler of this world saw something that was needed in society, saw something that was needed and sanctioned by God, but what he used it to do was distort it and use it in a negative light. Where did, why do I say that? Why do I say that? Because there's so many things that we deal with and so many issues that we have going on in this life that we refuse to confess to the God, to the Lord, to the God that we serve. Amen. 
you think about it. One of the biggest issues adults face in life is being untruthful. Amen. Being untruthful. And it can come in subtle ways. It can come in big ways. In your marriage. When your wife asks you, do I, honey, do I look fat in this? <laughs> we have two options to do. Tell the truth or tell them what they want to hear. But then if you go out later on and, and then she starts getting looks, what's the first thing she said? Why you didn't tell me the truth? <laughs> Why you didn't confess what was going on? <laughs> Amen? So that word confession stood and it stands to mean letting it all out. Amen? You're supposed to let it out. Big or small, white or black, Young or old, confession is an intricate part of your life. As a believer, it's especially, especially important. The Bible declares, confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Believe in your heart that, that God raised him from the dead and you shall be saved. Amen? You've also heard this word confession in what other religions? Catholicism. Amen? Roman Catholic churches use this, use this word as a daily means of not talking to God, but talking to the man of God that they've set in place, the priest, and, and, and confessing your sins to them. And for them, you get a Hail Mary and uh, say Peter's name three, four times, and, and your sins have been forgiven. But we know who the true and living God is. Amen? I'm not going to step on their toes today, amen. <laughs> I'm not going to step on their toes today. We're we, we going to have church today, amen. Amen. So, in order for us to get a proper understanding of confession, this text that we're looking at today, I believe, is one of the most intricate parts of the New Testament. One of the most deliberate confessions that we can make. Why do I say this? Because without this, I don't believe that we can get to the confession of faith that we made. And I'm going to walk you there in a minute. I'm going to walk you there in a minute. So I know, I know some people are like, where are you going, Pastor? Where are you going, Pastor? What are you doing with this? Where are you going? And we're going to get there, but I just want to walk you down this road real quick. Somebody say confession. confession. One thing that I think confession offers for the sinner as well as the believer, it offers the benefits and the relationship with God. Amen. For a sinner. For a sinner. There was a point in your time in your life that you didn't have a clue, uh, have a clue where you were going. Amen. Everybody here wasn't born sanctified, uh, uh, holy roller, and, 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 and all of the above when they came out the womb. Amen. There was a point in time where you ran the streets. There was a point in time where you was doing everything outside of the body of Christ that you had no business doing and you had no thought about being in the body of Christ doing it. Amen. There was a point in time where you was just uh, out there and you wanted to be you. You wanted to do you. You, for the young people, you wanted to have your swag. You wanted, to, uh, uh, you wanted your cake and eat it too. You wanted to be about these things and be about the ruler of this world because it was so flashy out there. It was so much going on that what you saw was so much better on the outside than what the church told you. Because the church told you I had to come in there and sit down and, and, and be quiet. And, and every now and then I could jump up and say hallelujah. But outside the world, the world told you you could do what? Be me. Whatever you wanted to do, the lust of the flesh, you can have the women, you can have the men, you can have the drugs, you can have the alcohol, you can have the sex. And, and, and sorry, I'm going to keep it real, Pastor, so I'm going to keep it real with you this morning, you can have this afternoon. You can have whatever you wanted outside of church. You can have it, and, and you can enjoy it, and, and, and don't worry about what comes along with it. But for right now, I want you to just enjoy the ride. How many times you heard that, enjoy the ride? Enjoy the ride. We're going down this walk. We're going to do our thing. We're going to be our own people. And at the end, at the end, I can't tell you what's going to happen. But I'm going to tell you, enjoy it while you want it. Amen? When you were young, you didn't want to hear about Christ. You didn't want to leave the streets alone. You didn't want, uh, uh, you didn't want all these other 
intricate things that came along with it. But do I have any witnesses here that can confess that I wasn't saved, that I wasn't sanctified, that I wasn't filled with the Holy Ghost, that I wasn't fire baptized at some point in my life, that I did some things, that I went through some moments in my life, that I experienced some things that, that if you really got to know me, if you want to know my testimony, my testimony didn't start where I sat right there in the altar. My testimony started a little time before that where I had to get to that place where I was empty, where I had to get to that place where it was nothing inside of me, where I had to get to that place where I couldn't see where I was going or whether I was coming, but I had to get to a place so I could see who God was. Amen, amen. I've been in that place and you've been in that place where we've had no business at. You know them places that's open after two. And I know the old generation say it ain't nothing open after 12, but what? Uh, we ain't going to go there. <laughs> but, 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 but it ain't nothing open after 12. But what? Uh, we got little kids here, and, and, and I ain't ready to expose y'all to that. But, but, but there's some things that you're going to learn in life. And, and when your grandmother tell you or your mama tell you, boy, don't go out there and spend the night outside, uh, out the house. And don't go out and do all these other things because there's nothing good that comes after 12 o'clock. The club ain't good. <laughs> Amen. But as I said, there were some confessions that you had to make. Confession number one, if you all know Romans 10 and 9. 10 and 9. That if thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt believe, that, the believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. At that moment where you gave your life to Christ, you heard a couple of confessions that were made that, that your soul, that your spirit attached itself to and said, I need that right now. I need thee, Lord. Oh, I need thee. You saw some things that was going on in your life and you said, I can't get away from it. So I need to get to that hand of God. I need to get to that place where somebody told me a long time ago, I heard my grandmother praying for me. I heard my mother praying for me. I heard my father praying for me. I didn't listen to it then, but I heard it in my spirit. And at this point now where I'm at, where I'm lost, where I'm broke, I need to confess some things to God. I need to get back to a place. And what do I say when I need to get back to that place? You heard John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. You heard Romans 6 and 23 that says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. See, those things when you were at that moment as a sinner brought you to relationship with God. Somebody say relationship. relationship. See, relationship is this thing that we have to build on. There's this thing where I'm not worried about man's doctrine, where I'm not worried about what man is telling me I need to be. Relationships mean that no matter what you look at me as, because I know who I serve, and no matter what you say about me, because I know who I serve, no matter what you thought about me, no matter what I do, because the God that I serve said I am able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all. Amen? Amen. So as we look at this confession that moment of confession brought forth a benefit, but I believe that without our text, like I said, we could have never gotten this confession of salvation. Somebody say, let's go to some word. Let's go to some word. Matthew 16. As we visit our text, which is the single most important confession in my eyes in the New Testament concerning Jesus. We must first define what a confession is. The Bible defines confession as this. It's defined as an acknowledgement of one's belief or faith. It also means something you can declare an adherence to. Vine's biblical dictionary defines it as an affirmation. An affirmation. You see, none of those, none of those three definitions came with the penalty. Amen. Now, when we pick up our text in the 13th verse, we find Jesus asking a peculiar question of his disciples. Who do men say that I, the son of man, am? This is real profound because if you think about this scripture, this is the only time in the New Testament that Jesus had ever showed a concern for what somebody else thought. This is the only time in scripture that you find this. That Jesus had ever asked, who do you think that I am? Who do men tell you that I am? 
And, and, and in this peculiar question, uh, uh, we have to really understand that I don't believe Jesus was concerned about who men thought he was, but he was more concerned with the response that his disciples gave, what they had been listening to, what they had been paying attention to, what they had been listening to in those places where they wasn't surrounding Jesus. And you know those people that got into their ear and said, hey, who is this man that you're serving? See, I, I, I understand. I think that he, he, he's a prophet. I, I, I think that he's doing great works. I think that, 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 that he's nice in all things and all those things. He's, uh, uh, he's, a, he's a bag of chips and all that in a bag of chips. I think that about him. But who is he really? Let me tell you what I really think. There's some people here right now that in your life you have heard so much other negativity about who the Son of God is. When you go to work, you hear the Muslims tell you that he was just a great prophet. When you go see the atheists, they tell you that what? That, that, that he doesn't really exist. That he wasn't the son of God. You hear all these other things about who Jesus Christ is to them. See, 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 in that moment, I believe Jesus was giving instruction because one of the things that you see that Jesus didn't do when the disciples said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some say that thou art Elias, some say that thou art Jeremiah. One thing Jesus didn't do, he didn't question what they said. He went on to the next thing. There's some places in your life where you got to step out and go on to the next thing instead of listening to what everybody else got to tell you. When you need healing, you got to move on past those people who say that the only healing you can get is those drugs that the doctor got. You got to move past those people who when they when you tell them that you don't have the money to pay rent, that they tell you that you need to go in down to social services. You depend on the God that you serve who's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all. How many of us have been in that place where we have second-guessed God? We've all been in that place because somebody got in your ear. Somebody told you, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Why don't you, uh, why don't you go ahead and, and, and get out there and do those things that, that you're not supposed to do, those illegal things? Why don't you go see those men? Why don't you go see those women that you know are no good because you need something? And God said, no, wait on me. See, when we get to that place where, where, where we second guess what this word talks about and we second guess we have to make some confessions out of our mouth amen amen in that scripture where you jump down to sing but the next thing jesus said like i said he he never gave light he never gave the discussion once they once he heard what the disciples had said about everybody else what was the next thing that jesus said but who say ye that I am? Who say ye that I am? And it's funny that the Bible didn't give any names of the disciples that had everybody else talking in their ear. It didn't give light to see that, that, that they didn't give any names. It didn't say James. It didn't say John. It didn't say none of the other disciples. But when it came to the affirmation, of who the Son of God was. Simon Peter. Simon Peter answered. And I believe I could see it. I could see it play out in my mind. I could see it play out in my mind where you know you get to looking around you and, and you, you want to see who else might want to stand up, but you know it's already in your spirit what's going on. So Simon Peter stood up and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, the Son of of the living God. How many people have made that affirmation that thou art the Christ, Christ being the anointed one, that thou art the anointed one, the son of the true and living God, the son that has brought me from a mighty long way, the son that has looked over my family, the son that has brought healing in my life, the son that is bringing deliverance in my life as we speak, the son that when I looked in my cabinet and there was no food and I prayed and somebody walked to my door, the son of the living God, that's who he is. Simon, who was given the sure name Peter by Jesus Christ in the third chapter of Mark. In the third chapter of Mark. See, I don't believe that, that Jesus had to ever ask this question, but he already knew what it was going to be, but he had to get man's 
He had to get man to, uh, uh, to give the affirmation, to give the confession of who he was. See, all day long I can tell you that I'm Pastor Brockenberry. All day long I can tell you that that's Elder Tony. But until you see the fruits that are inside of me, until you see the works of God that are working inside of me, you only, only you can make that confession. See, I see Pastor Fields here all day long. But if I don't see the works of his labor, if I don't see the fruits, if I don't see him out there witnessing to, the, to, to men and women about Jesus Christ, just because he has a title doesn't mean he is that. Amen? So Peter, we know who Peter is. Peter was the brawler. Peter was, uh, 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 Peter was the one who walked on water. Peter was the one who was quick to pick up a sword. We know this about Peter, but we know his name originally was Simon. See, most people don't pay attention to that. It was Simon. He was given the sure name Peter by Jesus Christ, even before this declaration was made. Amen? When you walk and understand about Mark 3, how it ties into Matthew 16 and 17. See, Matthew 16 and 17 says that, And Jesus said unto them, Blessed art thou, Simon Bajorno. For flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, thou art Peter. He didn't say Simon Peter. He said, thou art Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. First part of that we have to understand. Peter. This sure name Peter and the church that when, when he said and, I'll, and, and upon this rock are two different words. This word Peter in the Greek word is, is Petra, meaning stone, meaning stone. This word rock that he said and I'll build my church on is Petros or Petros, meaning a body of rock, a body of rock. So when you look at this. Have you ever gone out to a lake or a river and you've learned how to skip rocks? Everybody here learned how to skip rocks? You take a small pebble and you take it and you angle it just right and you do it and you throw the rock and it ripples the water. Nobody got that. <laughs> Nobody got that. That stone, which was Peter, his assignment was to ripple the water. It was to ripple the water so that the confirmation could begin. It, it was to ripple the water so that man could start to see who this man that they were walking with was. Who this, uh, who, 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 he wasn't just a great prophet. He wasn't just a rabbi. He wasn't just uh, uh, somebody that was coming by a fly-by-night ministry. He wasn't just there to, 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 do the, to, to do the huckabuck and to jump around a little bit and tell you, so in $300 and I'll bless you like that. It wasn't there for that. He was there to ripple the waters and cause some change in some life. So when he made that confession, he made that confession and caused a ripple in the water. And what did Jesus say? And upon this rock, upon this solid mass, what was that solid mass? That confession that Peter made, that thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. The son of the living God. That scripture goes on to tell in verse number 19. And I will give thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. That last verse number 19. Gave you three points, and I ain't going to hold y'all much longer. Gave you three points. Three points that I think all of us need to really look at. The first point. Confession gives access to heaven. Confession gives access to heaven. Where do we go at the first part of verse number 19? The first thing Jesus said to him. And I will give you the keys 
to the kingdom. Once Peter made this declaration, we see Jesus do three things. He gave Peter the keys to the heaven. Once you confess the word of God out of your mouth, it gives you the keys to heaven to possess anything in heaven. If you took some time right now, after you made that confession, there's some things that you want released from heaven on your life. Amen? People need healing. Healing not just in your body, but healing in your mind, healing in your spirit, healing in your soul. Too many people have gone through so much emotional hurt. Too many people have gone through so much emotional breakdown. Too many people have dealing with mental issues that may not be looked at on the outside. You may wonder why somebody always has an attitude with you. You wanna, may wonder why somebody always is nasty in their life. You may wonder why somebody is always going through some things because there's a mental breakdown, a mental lapse that they have to be addressed. And the only that we can do, only way we can address those things is to begin to make these confessions so that we can tap into what heaven offers. Tapping into what heaven offers. Amen. And, and, and when you tap into what heaven offers, you can jump into my second point. Confession allows you to bind things on earth and know it will be bound in heaven. See, when you confess to God using the words about your situations and you bind it up in the world, it places the same hold on it in heaven. Give those problems that you have a lockup sentence. A lock up sentence that lasts throughout earth, throughout eternity, throughout heaven. There are some situations that you're going through right now that have to be bound up, that have to be locked away, that have to be set down, that have to be put in the hold and in the grasp of heaven and on earth. Because there's some things that you're going through that your normal man can't hold on to. There are jail cells in heaven that it has to bind. There are things that have to be wrapped around it. There's things that have to hold it down. You know those moments in your life where you're going through those painful situations where you say, God, I need thee. Oh, I need thee. God, I need you right now. God, I need you to strut down out of heaven because I can't do it no more. I can't do it by myself. I need you to bind some things up in my life. I need you to grab hold of some things in my life and do something new for me. You give those days, you give those things a lock-up sentence. Everybody's seen on cable those shows as lock-up. You've seen death row. That's where you need to send these situations in your life, to death row. Death row. To death row. Somebody say death row. death row. Those situations in your life have to be put in a place where you're stomping it out, where the devil has no power, where the devil has no authority, where the devil can't see past what is going on in the jail cell, where he has no access to your life, where he has no understanding of this God that you serve. Why you walking new when you went through the hell that you went through? Why you walking boldly before the throne of grace? Confession, confession. There's some things that you have to bind up. There's some things that you have to go. Job 12 and 17 said, let the counsel of the wicked be spoiled. For Psalms 80 and 16 said, that let the enemy perish at your rebuke. See, there's some things that you got to say out your mouth to usher in yourself into this presence and begin to tap into heaven. These keys are the words that you speak out of your mouth. The Bible declares that life and death lies in the power of the tongue. Speak those things that are not as though they were. There is a process that you go through when you release the keys out of your mouth that it begins to tap into heaven. It begins to speak some things, but you got to use word to speak into those things. Mark 11 and 23 says, I speak to every mountain in my life and command it to be removed and cast into the sea. How many people here got some mountains in their life that they need removed? How many people here got some afflictions that they need to be gone? How many people need to say, God, remove that mountain right now and cast it into the sea? Micah 6 and 1 says, I contend with every mountain and command them to hear my voice. My God. My God, see, 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 when you open your mouth and you begin to talk and you begin to speak this word, the Bible declares that at, every, at the sound of, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. At the name of Jesus, demons shall tremble. At the name of Jesus, shift has to take place. How many people need a shift? 
How many people need some deliverance? How many people? See, I wasn't that sanctified all the time. I wasn't filled with the Holy Ghost all the time. I needed the hand of God over it. And if I don't watch out, I need it over me even more now. My God, my God. See, 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 we're going we, 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 we to experience this because after you rebuke some things, the second part of that 19th verse says that confession allows you to loose things in the earth and they will be loosed in heaven. That word loose, released. That word loose, let go. That word loose means I speak it out of my mouth and know that it's not going to return to me void. Because it's the word of God that I'm speaking. If you begin to lose some things out of, in, in your life, the favor, the blessings. And see, loosing doesn't just require, just talk about the blessings and the honor of God. You got to lose some bad things out of your life because you need to tell it to get on. You move on out. Get your uh, bags and you got to go. You know how when you was in those relationships that was no good, at some point you had to loose yourself away from that relationship. You had to say, get on out. I can't deal with you no more. I can't deal with the drinking. I can't deal with the alcoholism. I can't deal with the sexual promiscuity. I can't deal with all these other things. I can't deal with running the street. I got to loose myself away from you. I got to get back to a place where I'm serving God. I got to get back to a place where I'm in the face of God, in the presence of God. How many of us have gotten to a place in our life where we needed to get back into that presence? That presence, that presence, that place where you're in a secret place. The Bible declares in Psalms 91, he who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty see there's some time there's there's that place where you need to get in your quiet time so that you can get back into his presence so that you can get back under his shadow see when we talk about god's shadow it's bigger than anything that you've ever seen when his wings spread when his arms spread when he opens his eyes it covers you my God, when he opens his eyes, when he sets the precedence of things, it covers you. It puts you in a position where you look up and you say, that's my daddy. That, that, that's my covering. I know I'm safe under here. No matter the weather, no matter how it looks, no matter what goes about, I know I'm safe under here. There's no tears in his covering. There's no tears under his wings. There's nothing but my favor. There's nothing but the blessing. There's nothing but the honor. There's nothing but the glory. And when I get myself into that presence, I look at Psalms 91 and 10 and it says, no weapon formed against no. No, when it gets there and say, a uh, 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 thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy hand, but it shall not come now thee. Only with my eyes shall I see the reward of the wicked. Why do you only see it? Because you're covered under the shadow. Covered under the shadow. See, that place of the shadow means you feel the anointing falling fresh over your body. You feel the hurt places begin to made, be made well. You feel your mind being restored from those hurts and those heartaches and those breakdowns. You feel your mind being renewed. You feel your body being healed. You feel the anointing. You feel the blood that reaches from the highest mountain to the lowest valley. You feel it covering your body from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. You feel it moving through you because you're covered under the shadow when you begin to lose things you look at exodus 12 and 13 i cover my doorsteps my doorposts and possessions with the blood of jesus Revelation 12 and 11, I overcome the devil through the blood of Jesus. Hebrews 13 and 20, I am made perfect through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Uh, uh, Matthew 6 and 33, I seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all things shall be added unto me. Genesis 22 and 14, you are Jehovah Jireh, my provider. You are El Shaddai, the God of more than enough. I am blessed coming in and I'm blessed going out. Psalms 35 and 20. I am God's servant and he takes pleasure in my prosperity. My God. See, you release. See, see, you got to open up your mouth. Turn to your neighbor right now and begin to release some things into their life. Start telling them a little bit about their self. Start telling them about the blessings and the glory of God. See, we have to open our mouth. See, man, you're, you're blessed in your coming and your going. You're blessed by the anointing of God. You're covered under the blood of God. You're covered by his spirit. Those things have to be done. See, we begin to open our mouth. See, we can't be cute Christians no more. We got to begin to be bold enough to go before the throne throne with what God is speaking to us. 
See, in this season right now, Satan is working rampant out there in the world. He's destroying kids' lives. He's destroying family lives. He's destroying everything else that we see in the natural. But when we begin to speak in the supernatural, we begin to see shift change. We begin to see things operate differently. We begin to see things from a different light. See, when you see things from a spiritual eyes, when you say, God, open my spiritual eyes, when you say, God, open my spiritual mouth, when you say, open, God, my spiritual discernment, I need to see things from your light because the world is failing me right now. The world is destroying my heart right now. But God, you are great. You are wonderful. You are marvelous. And greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. When you talk confession, when you talk confession, you begin to do those three things. The first one was what? Grab the keys. The second one was what? Bind. Bind. And the third one was loose. Loose. If everybody can stand to your feet. Tell y'all what's going on.